Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. I've shown you how to get the value from a form. I've shown you how to get the value from a subform. But I haven't showed you how to get a value from a subform's subform. In other words, a nested subform, right? So we got a form out here, and then that's got a form inside of it, and that's got a form inside of it, and I want to get that value right there. How do we do that? Well, that's the focus of today's video. And here, here it is right there if you want just to, you know, some people are like, just get to it, man. Well, there it is. <laughs> I'm going to explain it. All right, here we go. I'm not only going to explain it, but I'm going to show you a problem that Miles was having and how to fix it. And it comes up a lot. But uh, Miles from Raleigh, North Carolina, one of my Platinum members says, I'm trying to follow your naming conventions, but I'm stuck trying to reference a control on a subform that's inside another subform. It's not working the way I expected. Can you show me how to properly reference a control on a nested subform? Yes, I certainly can. But first, a couple prerequisites. This is an expert level video, which means it's beyond the basics, but we don't need any programming for it. Experts kind of like the, the meat in the sandwich of beginner and developer. But first, make sure you watch this video so you understand how to get the value from an open form. And we talk about actual forms and fields in a subform is right there. That's how you get the field the field value from just a standard subform. And if you don't know what subforms are, go watch this video. And if you don't know what nested subforms are, go watch this video. It's a form inside a form inside a form. And yes, you can do this. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. Now, in here I got customers, a basic single customer form, and I have a button here to open up an order form. Now the order form is a main order form that has details about the entire order and a sub form inside of it that has all the line items, right? The details form. And if you look at these guys, right? It's form, sub form, okay? Now, what if you wanna take that whole thing and put it inside the customer form? Sure, you can do that, right? So go to design view, make this a little bit bigger, make some room for it down here. All right, grab the order form from over here, click, drag, and drop and that'll drop it as a subform object right inside your customer form. I'm gonna delete the little label that comes with it because we don't need that. And then I'm gonna slide this over here. Okay, and make sure you got room down here in the bottom. All right, everything looks good. Okay, save it, close it. Let's open it back up again. And there we go. We got, the, we got each customer and all their orders are down here. I'm, my screen isn't big enough. Let me make this smaller inside of here so we can see a little bit better. I'm just gonna take this and make the subform a little bit smaller just so everything fits on the screen, right? Okay. And these are these are tricky by the way. If you want to click on it, you got to click on it to get to this subform. If you want to get to the parent, you got to click off of it and then click on that guy. See how these objects work? It's a little tricky, but this just takes some practice. Okay. There we go. Make okay. make sure everybody fits nice. All right, beautiful. Perfect. Beautiful. All right. So now I want to get that value right there. Let's say I want to get it from the main menu. Okay. I want to click this button and I want to status it into here. Well, the way that it works is, is I'm going to just bring up notepad just to show you. Okay. So from the main menu, all right, we would say I want, so I'm going to, I'm going to just say message box. Okay. It's going to be forms. Customer F is the main form, right? Then inside a customer F, what is the object name of the first subform? Well, that's my order form, right? So that should be order F, all right? Now I wanna get inside of that form's properties. So that's where you say dot form. Now what control inside of this form am I looking for? Well, now I'm looking for the subform control inside there. That's my order details form. Right, where'd my notepad go? I lost it, hold on. All right, bring this up here. So inside the order form, now I want order detail F, right? And then inside of that guy, now I need its form property and then the field that you want. So it's, in this case, it's some extended price. That's the name of that guy right there. Okay, now, you think this is all going to work perfectly fine because that's the names of my forms, right? Order F, order detail F. All right, let's plug this into a button. Come back out here. I'm going to close this. Let's put that inside the hello world button. 
All right, and oh, my VBA editor's on the other screen. Let me bring it up here and resize it. Okay. So instead of status, hello world, I'm going to put that in there. All right, debug compile once in a while. It compiles fine. Everything looks great. Okay, let me close it, close it, save it, open it. Let me open up my customer form so it's here. It exists, right? You can't. It won't work if it's not open. Let me hit the button. And, uh, oh, tech help free template can't find the field order F referred to in your expression. Why not? Order F is, I mean, that's the thing, right? All right, now this is the problem that Miles was having. He had everything correct with this formula. Everything was fine, except look at the name of this subform. Whoops, double click. It's orders instead of order F. Why is that? Now, this is one of those pet peeves I have with Access. I don't like the way this behaves like this. And I, if I could get this to the Access team, I'd tell them you guys should change this. Because look, if I go into Order F, go to Design View, go to its properties, I set orders as the caption show, shows up up here. That's what Access will use to name the subform if you drop it in a form. I hate that. I don't like that. Because, you know, you could put in here, uh, this is the order form as your caption, right? And I want that caption to appear when I open up the order form for the user. This is the order form, but watch this now. If I go to the customer form, let me delete this, right? If I drop it in now, see, this is the order form. There's the label and look at its caption. This is the order form. I hate that. I can't stand it. I, I ooh, pet peeve. This has happened to me before. So basically what you want what you want to do is as soon as you drop that subform object in there, rename it to whatever you expect it to be, order F in this case. And this guy should be fine because I don't think I put a caption on it. Yep, order detail F. Now that it's named correctly, save it, close it, open it. All right, I'm gonna move it over here. Now I can get its value. See, that was the problem Miles was having. I'm sure that's going to happen to at least one of you. It's happened to me before. And that's the naming convention right there. Let me bring up the master slide again. Boop, move it down here. Love my PowerPoint, right? This is it. Just remember that syntax. Forms, customer F. Order F is the first subform. Then once you go into a form, you got to go dot form. Then the name of the control on there, which is a subform, dot form. And you can keep going. There's a limit. I don't remember offhand what it is. You probably ask ChatGPT, but you or Google it if you still do that. Yeah, and of course, I I hate not knowing something. I had to ask ChatGPT. It says seven, but only three levels are fully supported. I've had forms with probably five or six nested. In fact, I just did a video a little while ago where we did the uh, the cascading combo boxes with like five levels, and I had country, and then inside of that was was. Uh, state then county then town right so i know i built at least five of them myself so i guess seven is the official one but use them sparingly but uh yeah there you go um if you like this kind of stuff this is the kind of stuff i teach in my access expert level courses the beginner stuff's for all you know the beginner stuff the basic stuff the developer stuff so you want to get into programming and coding that's really cool but the expert stuff's where we go through all the nitty and gritty of you know, the way that the, the controls work and stuff like this. So check them out. But that is going to do it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. 
It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.